I'm Nisha Mathur and welcome to Keys to Kismuth. Our show features amazing individuals who have found their keys to Kismuth. Dr. Kiran Patel, better known as Dr. K, and his wife, Dr. Pallavi Patel, have earned a reputation for generosity for developing and funding a variety of programs in health, education, arts, and culture, both locally and around the world. A successful cardiologist, Dr. Kiran Patel is also a serial entrepreneur, turning companies around with head-spinning success. He now runs the billion-dollar managed care companies Freedom Health and Optimum Health and multiple real estate investments. Karen Patel shares some keys to entrepreneurship. Be in tune with your passions, question what you're doing and how it can be done better, take risks and execute. My idea of partnership with this educational institution was to capitalize the resources that are available at the University of South Florida to create an impact. We did write a check but we gave our hearts and dreams. We never measured success in the end point. The end point arrived vicariously. Dr. Kiran Patel was definitely passionate and pushed hard. He began to develop solutions that made sense from the physician's point of view. He and his wife, Balavi, who is also a doctor, took a practical yet lucrative approach towards managed health care. I believe every human being has the potential and capabilities. An entrepreneur would be somebody who is passionate about something, wanting to achieve some goal and pushes hard to reach that point. There is a saying amongst entrepreneurs that the easiest part of starting a business is coming up with the idea. The hard part is deciding whether it's viable and then making it fly. To recognize the strengths and weaknesses of an idea through proper evaluation and prospecting and knowing when to proceed or not is vital for success. Karen G had found his entrepreneurial opportunity in healthcare management. Under his leadership, Dr. Patel turned around two struggling HMOs. Together, the companies became the WellCare Management Group, which had a revenue of over $1 billion and served over 400,000 members. Karen G reminds us that in order to become a successful entrepreneur, it's all about recognizing an opportunity and then asking yourself, are you ready to take the steps to turn your idea into a business? You have said that there are two different approaches to life. What approach have you taken and why? I have taken the most practical approach in the sense of what was served to me at that point, try to take advantage of those circumstances. I am a physician in Florida in 19, mid 80s, managed healthcare came into being. Many people shunned away from it, while I, as a physician, decided to take care of the patient regardless of his insurance. And that is where I saw this opportunity. In this case, I wanted to take care of the patient, which I did, and saw an opportunity of managed care. Dr. K was determined to race forward at a mind-blowing speed. He graduated from Columbia University as a cardiologist, and then straight out of his residency, he bought his own practice, then a home and cars. A true sign of an entrepreneur racing forward. in all of this? How did you do it? And tell us a bit about the moonlighting. <clears throat> I never had the money as most of us when we emigrated here 
although the positive side is we did not have significant debt. I had the seller finance me. So that's how I acquired a practice. So working for 12 hours in the night, I would make $300. So if you wanted to buy a home for $300,000, it meant 12, 10 nights of moonlighting. For your car, that meant another three nights of moonlighting. So I was never afraid to work. So although I did these things, I had a strategy of how to pay for it. And I was able to do that and expand in practices. When we return, find out how Dr. Patel turned his unstoppable determination into a multi-million dollar success story. Patel entered the managed care industry and was chairman of WellCare of Florida. At WellCare, he acquired struggling HMOs in New York and Connecticut and helped build the company into the largest Medicaid health insurance company in Florida and the fifth largest in the U.S. It's a lot of business savvy and maybe some luck. Whether you say luck or, uh, you know, in everything, Unless you take that first step, luck will never be there. To look for an opportunity, to take your chances, and work hard. Now, what I would call luck would be um, in, in our day, the saying of Prarabh and Purusharth means you do need blessing or luck or God's side on you, but the hard work is the most important one. And like in Gita, he says, Manushya Yatna Ishwar Krupa, it's up to you to do the hard work and it's up to God to give you the rewards. So I am always of the opinion that there is nothing out there that I cannot do. <laughs> and that's the type of mindset you need that you are totally, totally committed to anything you want to do, and I guarantee you, you will succeed. We'll all keep that in mind. <laughs>
Dr. Kiran Patel's father encouraged him to believe in himself, get a good education, and most important, help others. Besides managing his billion-dollar managed care companies, Dr. Kiran Patel is a founder of the Foundation of Global Understanding, a nonprofit organization that develops and funds a wide variety of programs in health, education, arts, and culture around the world. You know, what my father used to say to whom more is given, more is expected. And we focused on working on legacy gifts. By that, I mean working with established institution of education, research, and culture yeah. in United States, in the country where I had achieved all my wealth, my adopted motherland. And I owed it to that country and felt that whatever I can do here, I should do. And although I stayed for less than five years in India, the amount of work we did there was solely because of the, what my father made me feel what we should do and what we owe to that country. And then we did work in Africa, which was my Janma Bhumi. And that is where we have an HIV hospice center. We had helped 50 children, 55 children have heart surgery, et cetera. In Tampa, where Dr. K started his amazing journey, he funded many philanthropic ventures. The India Cultural Center, the Hindu Cultural Center to preserve his heritage, and the Patel Conservatory, the Dr. Pallavi Patel Performing Arts Center, where children learn dance and music. And you also contributed to the Dr. Pallavi Patel Performing Arts Conservatory. Tell us what that is and why that project was extra special to you. I think my wife was always interested in dance, music, etc. And I felt that doing something in that area would be good. The doors at the Patel Conservatory opened and our arts education programs blossomed. We started to give students the tools to dream, reach, discover, and create the performing arts. Students began integrating these tools into everyday life and contributed to our community beyond expectations. Here we are, and thousands of students have come through these doors. Many of our students are getting into the best dance companies, studying in the top schools, and winning international competitions. The Patel Conservatory is here because of the doctors Karen and Paula V. Patel. They are people of great, great vision and they understand that communities can be made great and they have done so many wonderful things for our Tampa Bay community, but particularly for education and in our sense particularly for arts education. Our young people now are uh, having wonderful careers in the performing arts throughout the world. The Patels have given millions to the University of South Florida for global sustainability and solutions. This helps cities around the world, including those in developing countries, reduce their ecological footprint while improving their form and function to make them healthier, more livable, and resilient. We expanded and we wanted to form a college of sustainability. Right. And we have to find a way of making sure that the world remains sustainable. If we continue spending resources the way we do today, we will run out of them and we will leave the world in a much worse space. And that is where I felt a college uh, would be of help. Fantastic. <music> Patel's philanthropy in Tampa, the family has also donated overseas, including an AIDS hospital in Zambia and transforming the village of Motafofalia in Gujarat, India. And I want to go back.
back and talk a little bit about your work overseas in Zambia and Motapopalia, the village that you completely transformed and changed the lives of all the villagers over there. Tell us a little bit about Motapopalia. Motapopalia is a small village where my father was born and it was his desire to see that every citizen in that village gets an opportunity like him to be able to go out or do something. So what we had done was built the hospital there, which was his dream to have, because people had to go several miles to just get basic care. And to have an English medium school in a village where we have a cricket field, we have archery, we have gymnastics, we have tennis, we have basketball. So infrastructure-wise, I would say that it would compete with any school in India and surpass 95% of them. So we did that in the village. We have provided sanitation, running water, drainage, sewer drainage, and bathrooms. So the issue that our current prime minister brought to attention and highlight of providing bathrooms and toilets to every citizen, we had achieved that about eight years ago or more. When we return, Dr. K talks about two of his unbelievable projects, a Wyndham Resort on Clearwater Beach and Surya Estates, his new home that brings three generations of his family together. Dr. Patel has now taken on a monumental new undertaking, construction on a $175 million resort on Clearwater Beach and a 35,000 square foot home. We spoke to the mayor of the city of Clearwater, Florida to find out more about this project. associated with it that we're going to have a product that will make all of us proud. Oh, Dr. Patel is one of those most interesting individuals, not only from what he's accomplished, but how he gives back to the community. I know that one of his sayings is that you control your own destiny. But more important than that, by controlling your destiny, you also have to give back. And that's what he does, whether it's in the arts, whether it's in education, whether it's in health care, uh, just being a part of the community. And we're excited to know that Dr. Patel now has a vested interest in Clearwater as well. Dr. Patel is now building one of the largest single family estates in the United States. The combined square footage of the sub homes within the estate amounts to 35,000 square feet. And you're also building a beautiful home, Surya Estates, I think 35,000 square foot home, but it's not the size that is impressive to me. I'm going to be honest with you, what was really impressive to me was the fact that your entire family, not just one generation, we're talking three generations, you, your wife, your kids, and your grandkids will all be living on this property. Is that true? It was my dream to have the family together and family values of India and Indians to them is what I see as the most important aspect. I think this home has 12, 13 car garage, yet you have made sure that there is only one kitchen. Tell us why you did that the traditional family dinners or breakfast are losing 
the value while I had the opportunity and the means to do it, I felt it was very important that I, if I leave something good to the children is that find time to have dinner together. When my son got married, his marriage was at the palace in Baroda. And then I thought, why don't I create a palace <laughs> in the United States? And that's how we decided to go of the concept of having a palace that is renovated and having a very modern inside. I think uh, my dad used to say, change of work is vacation. So for me, in all honesty, throughout my life, uh, I have never felt the burden of working hard. So when I was practicing as a cardiologist, Practically every night I had to go to the hospital, but the joy of seeing the patient surviving, putting in a pacemaker, finding the problem, solving it, gave me that energy to do things. On a final note, Karenji, what would you say is your key to success, your key to Kismet? Um, I would say... Passion, persistence, perseverance, uh, you know, hard work. Becoming a successful entrepreneur involves seeking opportunity, creating a clear vision, attracting great teams, raising capital, and harnessing a strong sense of dedication. These are all qualities that are part of Dr. Patel's foundation. Yet he has taken it a step further by making a difference in the lives of others through his philanthropy and a drive to change the world for a better place. I'm Nisha Mather reminding you that it's time to grab your keys to Kismet and seize your destiny.